Welcome back, Turning Hard Times to Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor. Really glad to have Quentin Henning with me once again. Today, uh, he's going to be with us, or he is with us, to talk about ISCA. ISCA project. Uh, it's a silver tin project that El Oro uh, owns and is uh, was advancing it very, very rapidly. It seems to be doing extremely well. It's one of the more exciting stories in my newsletter, I would say. Quentin is a technical advisor to El Oro. And, of course, he is also uh, the, mainstay, the mainstay technical advisor at Crestcat Capital, where his weekly commentary on Crestcat Gets Active uh, YouTube series is uh, highly recommended for investors uh, in the mineral exploration space. In fact, it's one of those must-see videos that I make sure I find out, I, I watch. And you can watch it live, actually. Uh, a lot of times I don't have the time to do it, but you can catch up with it later. It's just a very, very valuable service and one of the companies that uh, Quentin covers and is very much involved with is El Oro. Uh, before I say hello to Quentin, uh, I should tell you that it trades uh, in Canada under the symbol ELO. You can buy it in the United States under the symbol ELRRF. There's 63.7 million shares outstanding. I believe that's a correct number. Uh, today's uh, around um, 11 o'clock this morning, at least, when I checked it, is at $3.79 in U.S. money, giving a market cap, of, a market cap of around $240 million U.S. dollars or so. Quentin, thanks for joining us again. Yeah, always a pleasure, Jay. It's good to have you and uh, talking to us from Colorado, I presume. And, um, you know, I've, I've been following El Oro. Uh, I think you mentioned the name to me back around November of 2020, and I'm sure glad I did because it's really blossoming out into a what looks like a very major discovery of a silver tin polymetallic Discovery. Um, the company, you know, it's that ISCA ISCA project. Uh, it's got these breccia pipes that are hosting the mineralization around the uh, perimeter of this large caldera in Bolivia. And most of the focus thus far has been on the Santa Barbara pipe, but the scale of mineralization there just seems to be growing both to the north and now they're poking some holes to the south uh, down into some of the other, I guess, at least one of the other uh, breccia pipes. Um, but can you give us an update on this on this story, Quentin? Because it really is, I think, one of the better stories out there. It is. There's no denying this is a world class discovery. Look, uh, this is the only time I've been associated with a drill program where, you know, after a year and a half, they have yet to find the limits of mineralization. It's <laughs> absolutely unbelievable. Uh, you know, they've been they they kind of had this view early, say a year ago, that let's drill off a part of this and take it to a resource, you know, and they focused on the Santa Barbara area, which is one of the, the breccia pipes that you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, thinking, you know, this would be a, a reasonable task, and, and then they started drilling and, and drilling more and hitting more and drilling more and hitting more, and it just, it went on and on, and, and you know, most recently, They've announced uh, extension now, a major extension of the Santa Barbara target area, or this system, to the south. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this hole that came back a few days ago, this is early March, is is absolutely jaw-dropping. You know, it hit a 300, uh, 350, or sorry, 370, let me make sure I'm quoting it right. Yeah, 300, 300, 373 meters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, I mean, that's that's a, like a quarter of a mile. You know, like how often do you drill something like that? And, it, and the grade was 150, uh, 172 gram silver equivalent. Now, you know, the drill hole does have a, a significant amount of silver, but you know, guess what? Tin is a major component of this drill hole. So this is, you know, by far the value is in the tin in this area. So this is an exciting development. Uh, it, it still has the lead zinc as well. So there's, you know, the typical base metal assemblage that you would expect with silver. But this tin component is, is really, uh, setting ISCA ISCA apart from any other modern discoveries in, in this region in Bolivia. You know, so, uh, to put it in context, you know, other mines like, say, San Cristobal is, they're a, a traditional silver lead zinc mine in all, mm -hmm. you know, all respect. Whereas this thing has this tin kicker and the tin, is just mind boggling. You know, inside of that, I think the thing that I found most intriguing <coughs> was that inside of that, there are some higher grade intervals. Uh, for instance, there's a 28 and a half meter interval of 401 gram silver equivalent, 
which does include 0.61% tin. Wow. I mean, just think about it. That's, that's a lot of, you know, tin's $45,000 a ton right now. So that's wow. a lot of dollar value in, in tin alone. And then uh, additionally, there was a another interval inside that was 95 meters of 261 gram silver equivalent, and that included 0.43% tin. And then further down the hole, look, this hole, uh, it was drilled kind of westward from the underground adit there uh, that they've been drilling from, and it, it tested the you know more or less the full width of the Santa Barbara target area. And down towards the bottom of the hole, they hit another 60-meter interval of 0.28% tin. You know, so there's clearly uh, a driver of the system, like the, the magmatic driver, the tin porphyry that produced this system is – you know, interpreted to be lurking down in that region. Yeah, as I understand it, that hole that you referred to might have uh, hit a, a target area. Uh, a, um, I think uh, I think it's down on the edge of the Porco Breccia pipe. Do I have that right? Did that? Did that? Is yeah, that the, the Porco hole? Breccia pipe. It it is actually further south. Uh, if you look at Porco, it's about, I don't know, it's about another kilometer, believe it or not, to yeah. the south. Oh, okay. <clears throat> but okay. There's, this, there's this very distinct geophysical expression right. that the company has seen, which uh, in profile looks like a giant tongue that's emerging out of the Por- Porco area and extends all the way up. It's kind of sub-horizontal. It looks like a dragon's tongue. And it, it, uh, it extends sub-horizontally up underneath the Santa Barbara area. And that's why I think this thing's going to continue to grow. I think at this point the company realizes that trying to drill this thing off uh, is is going to take a little bit longer, you know, maybe another six months or so. So they've, they've forestalled the, you know, the goal of setting a, getting into a resource stage uh, a little ways, which in my view is a good move because, I mean, this thing, the, the way it's growing and the dollar value of this rock they're hitting, like why would you why would you stop drilling here? You know this this doesn't make any sense. So <clears throat> I would say look for a lot of uh, of news to come. I think the the biggest takeaway from that news release, Jay, mm-hmm. is that this drill hole uh, clips the that dragon stone that I mentioned. It basically right, right. drills through an area that's uh, anomalously magnetic. Now mm-hmm. what uh, Bill and Oswaldo have determined is. The mineralization, this tin mineralization, uh, occurs with a mineral called pyrotite, and it's a it's an iron sulfide. It's like kind of like pyrite, but it's magnetic. Okay, mm-hmm. so this is one of those rare cases where you can actually see a geophysical expression that is likely directly related. You know, can serve as a proxy. We'll call it mm-hmm. for uh, mineralization. All right now, mm-hmm. if people look at the news release from, let's see, it was March 1st that this was put out. Right. There is a figure that's attached to that that shows this big red blob that extends uh, southward from the Santa Barbara area. And that this hole, this uh, hole number, let's see, it's MET, it's, what do they call it, M, uh, I don't know what the name, name of the hole was, I can't remember it. Yeah, I don't have it. I don't have the name me. right in front of me, but uh, yeah. it basically clipped the end of this this tongue. Here it is D S B U zero three. Okay, it clipped the end of this tongue, and the thing is wide open. I mean, you, you know, you want to talk about a billion ton plus target? It's clearly there. This is incredible. It's a very sizable uh, magnetic anomaly, I believe. Is and they they just clipped the. The, the top of that thing, I guess, and it looks very large based on the pictures that they sent along with the news release. Uh, so, the, the, as I understand it, Quentin, these uh, tin usually is formed or settles out at lower levels, at deeper levels. Is that right? Yeah, tin usually sticks closer to the mothership, meaning the, the mm-hmm. in, causative intrusive. Okay, so the mm-hmm. magma itself that generated all the metal. Right, mm-hmm. and and the tin usually uh, stays closer to them. And that's not to say that it's it's like right there and then it shuts off. That's not how it works. I I would say over the next few hundred meters, you know, five hundred meters a kilometer, something like that, this system should persist. And you know, if anything, we should see more and more tin. Uh, you know, and, and who knows? I mean, this thing's gonna, every time we drill, it's have more surprises. It might. I think we might start to see copper and, and gold and stuff emerge too, but you know that's all to be to be seen here. It's it's really exciting. 
Yeah. So you think the maiden resource will be delayed? I know I met with Dr. Bill Pearson up in Vancouver, and he seemed to be hinting at maybe a, a, a sort of a two a two prong uh, resource. Maybe one from more of the northern area that's more silver zinc lead type, and then one to the south that has more tin component. And uh, but anyway, it's going to come later, I guess. The resource is what you're suggesting than we might have expected yeah, earlier. No, mm-hmm. That's right. There's no point in uh, announcing a resource right now when you're in the middle of hitting, you know, some of the best mineralization you've hit today. I mean, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, let's yeah, let's drill this thing off for a few months and see where it goes. Yeah. Can you give us a sense? I think you said forty-five thousand a ton uh, for tin. Is that substantially higher than normal? Because I don't follow the tin markets that that much. I don't really. I'm not familiar with yeah, the look, tin markets. Uh, Tin's an interesting metal. You know, it it's, was mainly sourced from Southeast Asia and China for many years, in fact, decades. Uh, but those sources are are gradually running out. Plus, China is is consuming their tin production. They don't necessarily export tin like they used to. So, tin uh, has become scarcer and scarcer, especially in the the Western world. And because of that, the price has gone up here lately. Okay, so if you let wind back the clock, there was a it was a tin shortage in the mid 1980s. There was a brief spike, but for the most part, tin was trading in the you know low dollars, maybe three, four, five dollars a a pound, which in terms of uh, you know metric ton is you know maybe a, you know seven, eight, nine thousand dollars a metric ton, something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. It's only been in the in the past you know couple of years here that we've seen tin really take off. There was a brief uptick, I think, in the late 2000s, and then you know, in early uh, teens here, but uh, this most recent uptick is is genuine. It's real. There's a tin shortage. There have been no significant primary tin deposits discovered in recent time. So, you know, Iska Iska is absolutely hitting this right. I mean, this is uh, probably uh, one of, if not the biggest tin discovery, hard rock tin discoveries in history. So if, you know, <laughs> in a market that's craving tin right now, you know, what, what better... Uh, present to deliver here is a uh, high-grade tin porphyry. Yeah, what's not to like? And uh, All right, so how many drills are operating there? And, and I guess they're going to just be drilling the bejeebas out of this thing, huh? They're going to be just yeah, drilling like got, crazy. Got three, but the f- fourth one coming, uh, you know, so they'll have four drills operating here shortly. And, yes, they are drilling like mad right now. If you look at the, the news release, every time they publish a news release, you can actually keep track of where the drilling is because uh, Bill and the team label the drills mm-hmm. that are in progress and so forth. And you'll see that they have a whole bunch of drill holes uh, set up down there in the south end of the Santa Barbara area of uh-huh. different, you know, off of different drill pads. And they're going to, they're going to tackle this thing clear down to the Porco area. I think by, you know, say six months from now, we'll have a much clearer picture of exactly how big this thing is. I, I think it's going to be enormous. It's absolutely huge. Yeah, I think you said uh, the most significant uh, tin discovery in a generation, and I asked Bill Pearson whether he thought Quentin was getting carried away, and he said, no, by no means. And now you're talking about <laughs> – anyway, it's it's a very exciting story. So can they can drill year-round there? Uh, yes, they can. I mean, there is a winter season, uh, you know, quote-unquote, yeah. uh, in which it, it kind of gets cold and blowy. Uh, which is coming, but uh, right now they're they're doing uh, a great job drilling. Uh, you know, I would say last year, other than an occasional windstorm, the company was able to operate pretty continuously uh, for the past eighteen months. Mm-hmm. And they're well financed, I believe. They've got money in the bank, and I think they put out uh, and made an announcement of some sort of shelf prospectus or shelf financing that would allow them some flexibility. Uh, upwards to, I think, if I'm not wrong, upwards to $100 million or something like that? Uh, I believe that's correct. I haven't read through the shelf prospectus. Uh, Uh The company has a pretty good treasury right now, but Mm -hmm. they are churning through a million and a half or so a month, I believe, uh, currently with this drill program. So they need to hit it hard. You know, this is one of those deposits where, you know, the price of the company, fortunately, is very high, and it absolutely justifies uh, drilling intensively. You know, to create value. So I, I have very little issue with with uh, the way the way that Tom and team have approached things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've kept the share structure very nice and tight with sixty three point seven million shares, which is really sort of reminds me of Great Bear, another company that I followed, and they did such a remarkable job of keeping the dilution down. And and the other 
way this reminds me of that is that these guys are, you know, they're drilling, drilling, drilling. They're not quick to make an announcement because the Great Bear, they kept finding it, the Dixie Project, they kept finding more and more. Uh, same thing is happening here. So better not to, uh, if, you know, if you keep finding more, you might not better set people's sights too low, I guess. So this is quite a story, Quentin. I want to thank you for bringing it to my attention some time ago. And um, and folks can uh, hear more about this and other companies that Quentin's involved with uh, at Crestcat, many of which I follow here as well. Uh, and uh, Crestcat gets active every Friday, I think at about, what, 2 o'clock Eastern time or something like that, Quentin, you guys do that? Yeah, it's 2 o'clock Eastern time. It's usually a little after because we're running running yeah. late, either Tavi, Kevin, or myself are getting slides yeah. together, but yeah. Yeah, uh, and it's live, and it's live. People can watch it live, and, and then, of course, uh, later on. Quentin, I want to thank you so much for spending time with us today and bring us an up, updating us on this very exciting story. Certainly, Jay, anytime.